Casey. I am here today to talk to you about the five freedoms of animals. Stick around to find out what that means. <laughs> I want to talk about the five freedoms that every animal should have. In the latest article of Reptiles Magazine, there was an article titled, Enrichment for the Mind and Body, Why Enclosure Design Matters. And you may have seen our friend Ming in one of those photos. Within that article, they mentioned the five freedoms for animals, specifically freedom number four, which is enrichment based. <laughs> So before I tell you what the five freedoms are, I want to go over a little bit about the organization that created this framework for care of animals. So back in 1965, the UK government um, hired a group of investigators to look into the welfare of farm animals. And at that time, the standards were pretty low. Their freedoms were limited to the freedom to stand up, the freedom to lie down, turn around, groom themselves. Those are like, you know, we all expect that. that that's something that should be done. But over the last 50 plus years, that framework has totally changed and transformed into what other countries all over the world use today. The first one is freedom from hunger and thirst. This one seems pretty obvious, but it really means that we're providing a good nutritional diet to our animals as well as fresh water. The second freedom is the freedom from discomfort. This kind of goes more into their comfortability. They have a place to hide, a place to sleep. They're comfortable within their environment. The third freedom is freedom from pain, injury, and illness. So this means that we do preventative care to prevent any illnesses, or we are providing immediate assistance for these animals that may be injured or sick. Freedom number four, which was featured in the Reptiles Magazine article, is the freedom to express natural behaviors. So this is where our enrichment comes in. So we wanna make sure that they have, if it's a climbing species, they have things to climb on. If it's a burrowing species, they have something to burrow in, etc. Like we want them to be as natural as we can in a captive setting. This also goes for um, herd animals. So if it's a cow or a mouse, we wanna make sure that they have conspecifics that live with them so they have company of animals of their own kind. The fifth freedom is the freedom from fear and distress. This might seem pretty obvious, but we don't wanna scare our animals. So tapping on the glass, picking them up all the time if they don't wanna be picked up, making them do things that they don't wanna do is very stressful for a lot of these animals that might be prey animals in the wild. So we really wanna make sure that they have a very stress-free, happy life when they're living in captivity with us. If you're interested in learning more about the five freedoms for animals, I recommend taking a look at the links that we're gonna put down in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.